Well, hello and welcome to Bar and Ventures interview series. We have with us today former Chief Election Commissioner, who was the 13th Chief Election Commissioner of India, Mr. T. S. Krishnamurti with us. Mr. Krishnamurti uh, was the key person who oversaw the 2004-2005 Lok Sabha general elections. He had also served the Election Commissioner of India as an election commissioner in the year 2000. Mr. Krishnamurti was a former Indian Revenue Service officer before joining the Election Commission of India and has in-depth knowledge as to how elections are conducted in India. Today. Thank you. So the first question that comes to my mind is, uh, did you ever think that one nation, one election could be a reality someday? Well, even when I was in the Election Commission between 2000 to 2005, this debate was very much on, though I did not uh, have an inkling of as to when it would come. There were discussions, there were both arguments for and against. Personally, and I used to say that in principle, both on economic grounds and administrative ground, it is better to have simultaneous elections. But politically, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, not an acceptable pr proposition for all the political parties because they, were all, they, they had their own apprehensions. So I was not sure that it was going to happen immediately. But then I knew the debate was on. Maybe sometime it would uh, materialize. Before getting into the nitty-gritties of the panel committee report, uh, my first question to you is, sir, do you think uh, the composition of the expert panel committee was fair? I don't want to comment on that. I'm so sorry because it involves the election commission. The best thing is uh, whatever government has done, we have to accept it. I don't think we have a choice. So I don't wish to comment on that. The document notes that about 15 political parties had opposed the move. But there is a little uh, by way of engaging with them, uh, the criticism or the dissenters like uh, Tamil Nadu Chief Election Commissioner uh, V. Palani Kumar, who told the panel that one nation, one election um, could potentially dilute the focus of uh, the region specific challenges and diminish the efficacy of local governance. Now, sir, what is your take on such kind of criticisms that the panel committee faced? In principle, I don't agree with this kind of uh, views because even as we held elections for the parliament as well as some of the state assemblies like Orissa, Tamil Nadu, the voters have shown their federal uh, choices properly and they did not vote for uh, uh, because just because the particular party was in power at the center that they voted for the state same party. No, we, voters have understood it. They have exercised their choice on their own. So uh, say, to say that, you know, uh, it will affect the uh, federal spirit of the constitution or that, um, you know, uh, the local government elections will be will not be uh, voted by the voters in a very free and impartial manner. I'm not in a position to accept that. Uh, so um, there is a there is a there is a concern that one nation, one election could flatten the political diversity that has marked India's electoral calendar since the 60s. When the and you know the entire synchronicity um, of the election calendar was first broken, much has changed you know in the Indian polity since then, including the ascendance of regional parties um, uh, in large parts of the country. How do you think one nation one election plan would pan out in this backdrop? You see, the regional parties which have increased in number, they have been taking a different view, uh, mainly on the ground that the federal. Uh, feature of the constitution will be affected if you have the election simultaneously both for the states and the center. But I, I mean, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it is uh, the correct stand because as I mentioned to you, there have been occasions when voters have voted differently for the central government and for the state government or state legislature or parliament. So it is not that the voters are not aware of the differences. But to some extent, the criticism may be partially true because when the parliament election takes place, the central issues are more dominant than the state issues. But that should not necessarily uh, uh, lead into a conclusion that this must be rejected. But if the voters are well educated, if the voters are under, have understood the differences between the central government and the state government, I do not think it's a very big issue. But anyhow, political parties have taken this view and then they think that the diversity will be affected and probably uh, unwarranted uniformity will come in. But I don't agree with that view. So one of the strands of criticism that faces this entire issue is 
that um, you know the federalism, the concept of federalism will be struck a blow if you know the one nation one election is actually implemented. And um, could you give your view to us as to you know uh, how would it actually affect the concept of federalism and uh, in terms of settled law? Well, as I mentioned to you, the, 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 the regional parties seem to think that when they vote, when they exercise their vote for the parliament, the voters will be led by consideration relating to the parliament election and they may exercise a vote different, um, you know, not differently as far as the state legislature is concerned. This is the main issue that has been taken up. That is one. Second, the report of the high-level committee talks about the shortening the tenure of the houses so as to coincide with the election to be held in 2029. This is again a thing which most of the state governments may not like because they get they think that they have spent money there for a five-year period tenure and that their uh, the tenure of the ho house is being cut short to three or two years or four years as the case may be. So these are certainly issues that they will raise and even constitutionally they may even raise because the report says as far as the change for the bringing about simultaneous election for the state and, and the center need not have the con, uh, consent of the states. That's what the report says. The report says only the consent of the states may be required in respect of holding the, uh, the municipal and corporation uh, panchayat election simultaneously. Otherwise, they think that an amendment, a simple amendment, the constitution without the consent of the state could be passed through. I, I don't know the, the constitutional uh, accuracy of this view, but be that as it may, there are genuine apprehensions on the part of the regional parties, though personally, on the basis of the experience I have gained, the, the having seen the voters' preferences being clearly cast differently, I do not consider that um, the diversity of the or the federal spirit of the constitution will be affected. Just taking a leaf from what you just said about the constitutional amendments, the expert panel committee has actually recommended significant constitutional amendments to bring into reality the concept of one nation, one election. Uh, it has also, you know, uh, recommended the introduction of a new article to help it align the tenure of various assemblies. It says yeah. that enabling amendments do not need ratification by states. Now, this entire point that some of the amendments would not require ratification of states. How do you think that is going to pan out? Do you think uh, this can be brought to reality ever without states being on board? Uh, although I'm a, I'm a law student or law degree holder, I cannot claim myself to be an expert in the constitution. But um, uh, even whether the consent of the ratification of the states is required or not, I am sure it is going to generate tremendous difference of opinion between the center and the state. And this will be challenged in the courts. Whether constitutionally it will be upheld or not, I, I'm not in a position to say, but this will be challenged. Um, so quickly now, uh, so do you think uh, a wider debate should be ensured before one nation, one election becomes a reality? I would say yes, it's always a good practice to put it to a public debate and have a different viewpoints and find out whether uh, a reconciliation is possible. As I said, administratively and on economic grounds, it is desirable to have elections simultaneously. But politically, it's not a very easily acceptable point of view. But now that they have given a, a period of five years or so for this concept to be translated into action, I think there should be a good debate, discussion. For example, uh, one of the suggestions made by a member of the panel, Mr. Kasura, Subhash Kashyap, he has suggested that uh, there should be a uh, the confidence vote should be uh, done in such a manner that it is it, ca it can be implemented only if a new leader is elected. That is a better proposition than having elect for a, it has been suggested that under the under the constitution, if a government falls, if there is a hung, hung assembly, they should go for an election. I'm not in very much in favor because if your intention is to have simultaneous election, you must avoid elections as, as, as far as possible. Now, here you are providing that the existing system based on the Westminster model, that the, there should be an election. For example, let us argue in, uh, how there is a lack of uh, confidence in the House, say about one and a half years before the tenure of the House. The suggestion here is that the government fall and let a new election be held for a period of one and a half years. That does not seem to be 
in my opinion, that's not seem to be right. Why have a small house only for a short tenure? So it's better to insist a vote of confidence uh, only if a new leader is elected. Otherwise, the old um, um, uh, government will continue. Uh, sir, uh, one thing, one question that has assumed a lot of significance now is that, especially with political parties raking this question up, uh, do you think simultaneous elections would undermine democracy and the basic structure of the constitution? My opinion, no, it, it need not. I don't think it is uh, such a revolutionary change that it affects the structure of the constitution. It's only a method. Election is only a first step in democracy. And uh, in fact, there are many other issues, electoral reforms, which we have suggested over a period of time. They need to be addressed. But I don't think uh, this can be questioned on the ground that it is affecting the structure of the constitution. But as I said, my knowledge is limited. It is the constitutional experts which decide who decide about this constitutionality of the issue. So the committee, the expert panel committee has said that the election commission had the power or has the power to control Lok Sabha and assembly elections. Um, and Article 327... Control. And Article 327... You said control. Yes. And Article 327 yes. gives parliament the power to make provisions for the same. Now, so my question, if, if it was always so simple, then why was not this entire proposition implemented earlier? I do not think that the uh, election commission has a control over the entire election. There's only control over the conduct of elections. As far as the procedure for elections, etc., I do not think election commission can take a decision on its own. It has to be only through a proper constitutional amendment. And so what are some of the key areas that you think the panel report is lacking? If you were, suppose, a part of the committee, do you think any essential part has been left out? No, as I mentioned to you, the only point, though I have read the report only cursorily, I may have to go through once or twice more, but the one thing that strikes me is the allowing the provision for the government to fall and elections to be held to synchronize the date of the parliament elections, which means, as I mentioned, if a government falls, if there is a hung assembly just one and a half years before the tenure of the house, they are suggesting an election to take place. There, I'm, I'm not uh, agreeing. In fact, I would suggest the suggest the suggest or agree with the suggestion made by Mr. Subhash Kashyap because it will reduce the number of elections in terms of practical uh, implementation of the, uh, the simultaneous poll. It would be a good idea to insist on an accountable, no confident motion rather than non accountable, no confidence motion. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, this is our last question, sir. Do you think there are any legal infirmities or loopholes in the One Nation, One Election uh, panel report? Well, not to my knowledge. I do not uh, find any difficulty. The only thing is it should be well prepared in the sense that administratively as well as, uh, you know, uh, training people, etc. And uh, having electronic voting machines, etc. There are advanced steps have to be taken. But I don't find any infirmities in the proposal. So that was, I think, all uh, we have all the answers that we wanted from you. Thank, Thank you. Thank so you very much. much. Thank you so much Thank for being you. with us here at Bar and Ben, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.